Today's tutorial was inspired by Marianne's papier.blogspot.com and I found this card idea on Pinterest and I thought it could easily translate into something for your junk journal. You will need two pieces of A4 card. I've used 160 GSM for this project but you can use anything that you've got and I am using plain but you could also use patterned just depending on the look that you want to go for. So I'm cutting it down to 10 inches by 6 inches. And you do that with both pieces and then I'm changing this out for a scoring tool and I'm going to score at 4 inches then again at 6 inches and then at 8 inches and do that with both pieces of card. If you're using pattern card then you need to make sure that you've got it the right way up when you score it. You'll see how it comes together in the next part of the video so then you can decide which way is going to be best for you. After you've scored the pieces you're going to concertina fold those score lines. So keeping the back section which is four inches wide flat you're going to then crease at the end of it, crease the next section then crease the next section back again and then you'll end up with something that looks like that. Do the same in the opposite direction for your other piece. Next you're going to lay one of the 4 inch sections over the top of the other 4 inch section so that you have a double thickness in the back panel. When you put these pieces together you should see that they line up but if they don't then you can do what I'm doing here and just slice a, a sixteenth of an inch off of that four inch panel. Once you've done that, if you try it again, you should find that they line up nicely and that those centre creases line up with each other. And then the rest of the folds should line up as well. Next I'm going to make a cut, or a tear in this case, from the top of the crease which marks the four inch panel and you're going to tear that on a diagonal or cut it down to about two and a half inches on the outside edge then you're going to do the same in the opposite direction for your other piece and you can use the, the first one as a template to make sure that it matches up You can do this to any height but I've just chosen two and a half inches to make sure that there's plenty of room for this to sit inside the pocket. Then you should find that everything folds up nicely and makes an interesting design on the front. I decided to place a photograph in the back panel of the card but you can put whatever you want. You can leave it as journaling space or you can add any kind of decoration that you can think of or you could even seal it up completely and just use it as pockets. I'm creating a pocket using the two back panels that are placed on top of each other. So I've just glued around three edges of one and stuck it on top of the other and made a little thumb notch in the top. Keep checking as you go to make sure that everything folds up properly. Then the photograph's going to be stuck in the back so that it gets revealed once you open up the card. Full transparency, this is the first time that I'd ever tried this project. So I was kind of um, making things up as I went along. Um, I, I did base it on that tutorial, but I put my own spin on it. And the person that I got the idea from had used a belly band as a closure because this was going to be used as a greetings card in the tutorial whereas I wanted to stick it inside my journal so excuse the fact that this didn't really work as well as I had hoped it did work for the purposes of showing you but if I was to do it again I would definitely make this pocket a lot bigger and more spacious to put the the card inside this piece was a bit too small but I persevered with it and it did work. It, it, you can get it in and out but if it had a bit more room then it would have been easier. 
So I made a pocket by wrapping around a piece of card, folding over the edges, creasing them in. I did that with the bottom and the sides. And then cut the corners as a diagonal. Just a very simple pocket. But what I would have done if I was to do it again is to create larger flaps that go around the back because this didn't leave very much room for gluing and it didn't leave much room for opening. So I matted this with another piece of design card just for decoration. And I tried to cut it out as much as possible but I did ink all of the edges of everything that I put in this apart from the photograph because that was already vintage and didn't need it. So that made the very straightforward pocket. Now you can see it's just a little bit tricky to put the item inside. I could have done it with being deeper as well. The next thing to do is to use design papers to create mats for your folded sections. So all I did for this was to fold and kind of guess <laughs> where it needed to go. So there you can see I folded that triangle just so that it would be in approximately the right position and then I cut along the lines that I folded. Another way to do this would to be create to create a second card and then cut the sections down to create little stencils that you could follow. But this was quicker and easier for me. So I was just trying to figure out the best way to do this. And then I realised that I needed to take some off the centre section. And then it fit quite well. I had intended on using the brown side but then I changed my mind and wanted to use the blue design instead. So I just flipped them over and swapped the sides. So for the next while I'll be just continuing this process by adding matting to each of these layers and what I'll do is just set this to some mild music so that you know that your sound hasn't stopped working.
I repeated the same steps for the other side with the second piece and then the next part is where I had a little bit of trouble with the design of it because I didn't know whether I should take this right down to the bottom. If I had a deeper pocket then I certainly would have done that but because I had such a shallow pocket I couldn't afford to put much more bulk inside so I decided to keep that bottom sort of triangular piece short so that the the plain card would be all that went inside of the pocket itself. So it looks great when it's inside the pocket but when it's outside I'm, I'm not convinced that it looks too good but you can decide for yourself what you think. So I'm just trimming that until it fits leaving an equal border just like the other pieces did. And when I was happy with those I stuck them down. I quite like the way it's created a bit of an optical illusion where it looks like those, those centre triangles are laid over the top of the background plank but it's actually folded in front of it. So from this view you can see that you would be able to create a pocket in the centre where those two bluey coloured triangles are. You could make a, a pocket right in there just by gluing those flaps closed around the bottom and the sides. But I left them open so that they can, so that the whole thing can be open to reveal that photograph. So I'm just decorating the pocket a little bit here with a die cut of a clock which I've cut down to size to fit. I just felt that everything was looking a little bit plain so I wanted to jazz it up a bit. I love that die cut. I think it was an old Sheena Douglas one. So now I'm just using uh, a Tim Holtz, I can't remember what the paper pads are called, what those words are called, um, but they're like individual word stickers that you can just use to embellish. And I've got these tiny tags which I can use inside those pockets while it's held shut by the bottom pocket. And then the large tag can go in the pocket that I created by overlapping one of the four inch sections with the other. I just needed to shave off a little bit of the edge to make sure that it fits in like easily. So there's plenty of decoration that you could add to these tags as well to make it even more interesting. But just be careful to make sure that they don't stick out too much so that they will go smoothly inside the pockets. It's always a struggle for me to get the bow to lie straight. So that slips in the back. And then I did decide to glue those front flaps to make those sections into pockets so that those tags would stay in. I realised it wasn't affecting anything else, it wasn't affecting the ability for the card to open up. So that just created some mini pockets, which were ideal for those tiny little tags that I made. I just made those using my Cricut machine. And then, as always, I like to have my tags with strings. So I did two with plain string and the big one with jute twine. I'll leave the link for that blog post in the description below. It was a gorgeous example that she made. She used decorative edge dies for the torn edges that I did. And there was a lot more to it than what I've done here. So this was to show you how you could use it in a journal, but please check that out as well. 
some of the inspiration that you can get from card making techniques is brilliant and I definitely recommend using Pinterest to get some ideas as well and don't be frightened to try searching for card making instead of junk journals because you can get all sorts of cool ideas for ephemera. So thank you very much for watching today. I hope that you like this tutorial. Let me know if you try it and I will see you again on Friday for another craft with me video. See you later guys. Bye bye.